Good evening again. I'm Susan Harada. I'm the director of the School of Journalism and Communication at Carleton University and the head of the journalism program there. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. So welcome to the third annual Peter Sturzberg Foreign Correspondence Lecture. We have a number of distinguished guests in our audience, um, but one in particular I'd like to acknowledge at this point, and that is uh, André Plourd, who is our Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs at Carleton University, and he has been a great supporter of this event from the beginning. It's an event that gives all of us an opportunity to talk about journalism, think about journalism, hear from smart and thoughtful journalists. You can trace a line from Adrian Arsenault, who we're hearing from tonight, all the way back to Peter Sturzberg. Just as Adrian does, Peter brought the world home to Canada and for Canadians. And that's why his daughter, Judy Laurie, and his son, Richard Sturzberg, established an endowed fund with the journalism program at Carleton. They're both here tonight, and you'll hear from them in a moment. But first, let me just say that they established this uh, uh, fund to support two very special projects, initiatives. One is the Peter Sturzberg Award in Conflict Journalism and Media Studies. It helps journalism students produce work related to media and conflict. And the other is, of course, this lecture series. It's designed to underscore the pivotal role that those who report from beyond our borders have always played and continue to play in keeping us informed, especially at, uh, it seems, at times like these, when given everything that's going on in the world, the one way we can try to make sense is by reading and listening to and watching smart journalism produced by smart journalists. And, one way we can do that is through this lecture, and we can ask for no better partner in this endeavor than the Canadian War Museum. So it's my great pleasure now to introduce Caroline Dromaguet, the museum's acting director general. Caroline. Thank you, Susan. Ms. Arsenault. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Canadian War Museum. Le musée est fier de vous accueillir ce soir pour la troisième édition de cette activité, présentée en collaboration avec l'École de journalisme et de communication de l'Université Carleton. Nous sommes également fiers d'accueillir une journaliste si accomplie et respectée pour cette série de conférences. My thanks to Susan Harada and her colleagues and to Richard Sturzberg and his family for once again making this event possible. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of our president and CEO, Mark O'Neill, who is with us here tonight. Hi, Mark. This lecture series is an important partnership presenting dynamic speakers who share their firsthand experience in reporting on war and conflict around the world. Adrienne Arsenault and her colleagues bring these international conflicts directly to our living rooms, helping us to better understand the world in which we live. Les meilleurs journalistes comme les meilleurs historiens et les meilleures historiennes, font preuve d'une étonnante curiosité et d'un dévouement certain à découvrir la, la vérité avec un fervent désir d'accroître la connaissance et la compréhension du public. Les musées jouent un rôle similaire. Notre travail au Musée de la guerre consiste à explorer l'histoire militaire et à raconter des histoires sur la vraie nature et les conséquences profondes des conflits humains. The War Museum promotes public understanding of Canada's military history in its personal, national, and international dimensions. In doing so, we also explore contemporary subjects. We continue to examine important, the important role played by journalists and documentarians in deconstructing the politics and of conflicts. Whether in presentations such as World Press Photo, through a partnership with Hot Docs, or the recent exhibition, The Wounded, by photojournalist Stephen J. Thorne and The Legion magazine. As the world around us continues to change and evolve, seemingly faster than ever, never has there been a more important time to recognize the crucial work of journalism in conflict zones. We are proud to have partnered with Carleton School of Journalism and Communication on such an important event. 
which helps to explore the multiple facets of war and conflict and honors the enduring legacy of Peter Sturzberg, one of Canada's most prolific and influential voices from the front line. C'est un privilège pour nous de participer une, à une discussion éclairée sur la guerre et le conflit, surtout en si bonne compagnie. Thank you all for joining us tonight, and I hope you enjoy what promises to be a very thought-provoking and informative evening. Merci. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay, I have to explain this uh, thing going on back here. We have a little platform for our special guest, and so I feel like I'm a little too tall for it, but a little too short not to use it. Um, our, next, uh, our next speaker probably doesn't need to stand on it. Um, I'd like to invite Richard Sturzberg up here to uh, tell you a little bit about this lecture and introduce a video. Thank you. Now I tower, I tower above you. Um, the, uh, my sister and I wanted to set up this, uh, this series of talks um, because, of course, it's not just in memory of, uh, of our father, but it's also because it becomes increasingly important to be able to cover conflict, particularly as conflict becomes more and more complex, whether there are non-state actors involved in conflict, whether it's civil wars, or whether it's traditional military operations. To be able to have a conversation about how we cover them in the age of disinformation seemed to me and to my sister particularly important. I'd just like to say one thing, which is this, there's a very nice moment here this evening about uh, how long ago, uh, five, six months ago, my father <clears throat> and Matthew Halton were uh, inducted into the CBC News Hall of Fame. And uh, I was asked, as was Matthew's son David, who is here with us, to come and make a little talk. We were, I think it's fair to say, David, enormously pleased uh, to be, have our fathers inducted. At the same time, his father was an even more distinguished war correspondent. Have our fathers inducted at the same time to the CBC News Hall of Fame, and who was there to induct them? But uh, I think it's fair to say, uh, CBC's currently greatest foreign correspondent, Adrian Arsenault. So it's all I hear tonight. Adrian, thank you so much for coming. David, thank you for coming. So with that, I introduce myself, a little video. Thank you. Peter Strasberg was born in China in 1913. His mother was half Japanese and half Irish. And his father was a member of the colonial administration, the British colonial administration in China. So he grew up in a curious kind of imperial household of mixed race and ultimately ended up in Canada when he was very early 20s and started his career as a journalist. He had become one of the very first people working for the CBC News. This is around 1938, and the CBC had just set up a news department. And of course, like he would have been at the time in 1938, 25 years old, say. So like everybody, every journalist uh, of the period, when the war broke out, the number one thing they wanted to do was they wanted to go to cover the war. So finally in 1942, they agreed to send him, and in early 1943, he arrived in London. He covered them first of all in the invasion of Sicily, and then as they, as they progressed up Italy and across the so-called Hitler line, uh, so he followed the Canadian troops all through Italy. Then he followed the Canadian troops for the liberation of Holland, and then he ended up in Berlin just uh, shortly after VE Day. And through the course of it all, of course, what he was doing was he was reporting on how the war was going from the point of view of Canada. So it was the first time that people could actually hear what war sounded like. There's a famous piece of my father broadcasting from the Leary line in Italy, where you can hear him say, 
listen to the guns roar. Just listen to those guns roar. And then you hear the guns in the background. So it was actually allowed, and the Canadians were the only ones who had this technology, it actually allowed the Canadians to bring people into the sound of the war in a way that had never happened before. We're in the attic of an old Italian farmhouse that overlooks the front as it's on a slight bridge. I'm standing here looking out of a hole in the wall that was made by a shell uh, during, the, the, during the fighting here a few days ago. This house, though, hasn't really been very badly damaged. It's uh, the only one standing that I've seen for miles around. Peter Sturzberg landing in Sicily was the first time a Canadian broadcaster had covered uh, Canadian troops on the move. He arrived just in time uh, to cover the liberation of one of uh, the key uh, objectives of the Canadian force that landed in Sicily, uh, the town of Ajira, uh, which was uh, liberated in uh, late July uh, 1943. And so he came basically the evening of the battle and was able to uh, uh, get there when the town square had been uh, liberated and the Sea Fourth Highlanders of Canada pipe band was playing the church bells in the background and was able to broadcast uh, from the, for the first time uh, Canadians liberating a uh, European, uh, European city. Uh, after years of really bad news uh, in, in the, the wartime news coming from the CBC and elsewhere, uh, this was uh, quite, a, quite an event. During the Second World War, radio was the only electronic media. There was uh, print reporting, uh, there was certainly a newsreel and film that had been around for some time, and uh, photogra photographic reporting was certainly available. But radio was um, in, at the cutting edge of technology. It was a way to bring, uh, with only a few hours delay in some cases, or at the least a, a day or more, uh, a delay reporting of uh, real live sounds from the battlefield into people's living rooms in a way that had never uh, been the case before. This was done through uh, very bulky, uh, by today's standards, portable uh, recording units uh, that weighed, uh, you know, uh, uh, dozens of pounds each that were carted on a Jeep that could then be brought to a mobile recording van and all of this sort of thing. But the result was that broadcasters uh, like Sturzberg were able to lay live commentary over uh, events as they happened. No matter how many times I've uh, seen that video, I'm always struck by the technology that uh, Peter Sturzberg had to use. Cutting edge in his day, and he used it to produce some powerful journalism. And it's precisely to foster powerful journalism that his family set up an award as well as a lecture in his name. And I'd like to now call upon his daughter, Judy Laurie, to come on up here and tell you a bit about the award and the award recipient for this year. Like my brother, I don't think I really need to stand on this podium because I'm tall enough. Um, the Peter Sturzberg Award in Conflict Journalism and Media Studies is awarded annually to an outstanding graduate student enrolled in a Master of Journalism degree course who undertakes a um, research project on the subjects related to human conflict, the media and conflict studies, conflict resolution, reconciliation, or reconstruction. The award is intended to underwrite research associated with the realization of the project. This year, the award is given to Najilian Verma for her project, Dealing with Stigma, How the World Changes for Relatives of ISIS Recruits. Ms. Verma is a second year Master of Journalism student. She has a BA and an MA in Mass Communications from Mangalore University in India before coming to Ottawa to study journalism at Carleton. She was an assistant professor for mass media at the university and worked as a copy editor for an online news portal. And so it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you this lovely lady who is going to tell you all about her project, and I have a special little certificate to give to her. Please, Ms. Verma, come up.
Good evening, distinguished guests, and all those who are gathered here today. I would like to sincerely thank Judy Laurie, Richard Stoosberg, the Stoosberg family, Carlton Journalism School, uh, for recognizing my passion and potential and for giving me this generous, very generous scholarship. Uh, before I talk about my research, I must say, uh, my dad prayed that I wouldn't get the scholarship because he did not want me to do the story. <laughs> The last thing he wanted me to go knocking on the doors of ISIS recruits. <laughs> um, my research is centered around the lives of some people in the southernmost province of India called Kerala. The place has garnered a lot of media attention worldwide, unfortunately, not for its high standard of living, tourism, multicultural mosaic, or religious unity, but for its recent unset unsettling yet very sure ties with the Islamic State in Syria and Afghanistan. Almost 120 ISIS recruits have been reported from the state of Kerala, which is the highest in the country. The Stoosberg Scholarship has given me the opportunity to explore the lives of these ISIS recruits and how it has affected their families and the society at large. Through this journalistic research, I intend to share with you the stories of people like Bindu Sampath, whose son is an Indian army official posted in Kashmir, and whose daughter, Nimisha, changed her name to Fatima and joined the ISIS group in Afghanistan. Since then, Bindu's family has cut off all ties with her. She has been battling depression and is being hounded by political leaders religious organization, and the media. Bindu told me that she lives in the hope that she will see her daughter and grandchild someday. Interestingly, four days back, I got a message from Bindu saying that her daughter has surrendered to the Afghan government and army. The story of the mother of Ijaz and Shiaz is equally poignant. They were radicalized by Abdul Rashid Abdullah, who is alleged to have connections with the Easter bombings that happened in Sri Lanka earlier this year. The mother of Ijaz and Shiaz has been dealing with PTSD and hasn't stepped out of her house in the past four years. I sat with her in her kitchen, and she told me she's learning to resign to her fate. I, got, I get an opportunity to bring to you the conversation between a seven-year-old son in Syria with his grandfather in Kerala, which is very different from the conversations between a grandparent and the grandchild. He was not asking for gifts. The grandson was trying to convince his grandfather that the only way to Jannat was jihad and to live under the Sharia law. This reiterates the fact that there is a continuous battle being fought in the minds and homes of the people, a battle against extremism and radicalization. In, this, in the midst of this fight between secularism, democracy, and multiculturalism, and growing radical religious extremism, I must say in a very different political environment, which is fundamentally right and populist nowadays, I'm trying to bring to you the stories of the lives of people that have shattered, mothers who've lost, lost their children, children who have had their childhood snatched away from them, sometimes even before they are born. It is also trying to look at the efforts of a very resilient society who is fighting to maintain its original identity. Thank you so much. Thank you for the award. Thanks, everyone. Congratulations, Naranjali. And now, uh, the next person I'd like to call up is someone who's very special to me personally because she was a student of mine. It's um, not the reason that I asked her to be moderator. Christy Kirkup is an accomplished journalist, and she's honed her professional skills by doing it all. She's worked in TV, radio, print, digital. She's worked for the CBC, the CTV, Sun Media, Canadian Press, and now she's the national affairs reporter with the Globe and Mail. 
In her dedicated pursuit of truthful storytelling, she is following in the journalistic footsteps of the likes of Adrian Arsenault. So please welcome as our moderator this evening, Christy Kirkup. 